Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Invin and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video on New World 1.1 Most Asked Questions and this is going to be basically a compilation of questions we've seen on Reddit, on the forums and of course in my Discord. So if you guys are not already in the Discord, the link for that will be down in the description so for any future videos like this you guys can take part. But essentially I'm going to be going over the most popular or the most asked questions or basically summarising those questions into a basic theme such as is new world a flop and then we're going to be talking about that in today's video before we jump into this one if you guys are not already subscribed make sure you go down below and press that big red subscribe button with the notification bell on as i do upload every single day so i would love to have you here as part of my channel community and without further ado we're going to jump into this one so the first question here is going to be will there be more new content soon which feels a little greedy you know we've just had the drop from 1.1 into the void but what we can defer from that is in the patch notes like I went over a couple of days ago for you guys there was a couple of things in there that we could pick up on particularly putting the new wells in some of the settlement centers which to me indicates that they are going to be there because it said for a future event well we know Christmas is just around the corner here, so my speculation on that one is that we're seeing a Christmas event in Eternum where I think we're going to get a Christmas tree in the middle of the settlements and there's going to be some sort of thing, either gathering baubles, tinsel, presents, who knows what it's going to be. Maybe it's going to be gathering snowballs, there's going to be snowbed everywhere, who knows. But it does seem very, very exciting. So I'm pretty gassed about that. We should be seeing some cool in-game stuff there. It'd be nice if we can get some kind of UI and map updates to go along with this. Of course, there's other issues in the game, right? But this is kind of like the fun side of things that I'd like to see worked on, which would be really, really cool. So fingers crossed there's something cool around the corner there, but we will have to wait and see when that drops. Now, the next one I've been seeing a ton of comments on, left, right and centre, all over Twitter, forums, Reddit, everything, is New World a flop? Well... No, basically, in my opinion, it's not. There's tons and tons of massively, massively positive things about the game. People are getting very drawn up, and I think it's because a lot of us have got very heavily invested in the game. You know, we've played the betas, we've played the alphas, we've played all the test phases. We've then come onto the game, we've played the full release, we've even played the PTR and stuff. And then there's some features in the game which are still, you know, subpar, let's be honest about it. But... Here's where I think we're going to see a massive increase. Obviously, if we get some Christmas events, that would be really cool. But on the stabilisation side of things, again, every time we get an update, things seem to go a little bit shaky. So I would like to see these probably less frequently, but more stable in the future. You know, obviously, weekly content is nice. Um, but obviously, sustainability is much, much better. So I would like to see that worked on. Obviously, if we can get these changes corrected now at the current state of the game, so that we get wars to be a lot more stable, because right now they're apparently quite unplayable i've not personally been in one so i'm not gonna like clarify but i would say that from what i've seen on people's streams and videos and then what people have been kind of telling me in the creator community that it's pretty uh, much a shambles right now let's see if we can get that fixed first let's fix the weapon balancing you know mages have been really just kicked in the teeth with this update it was with good intentions i believe it was to try and balance stuff out but when they buffed the warhammer and the great axe I made the Bruiser build yesterday, which you guys can check out if you do want to. Amazing build, but right now it's probably the only build other than a Void Gaunt build and healer build that you can actually run viably. So, it's a little bit of a shame, so hopefully we see those brought back up. But it is something they said they're fluidly monitoring. But what you've got to take into account is the positives here. So, the game's been out just over a month and a half now. We've seen new content added. We've seen improvements every single week. Without fail, they've been putting stuff in. And even more often than that, they've been putting several things in per week to stabilise the game, to improve stuff. So that is really, really good. They have acted on community feedback 99% of the time. They've done some sneaky things. So when we got these shadow updates or forgotten patch notes, whatever you want to call them, that was a pretty bad move. And I know, you know, potentially it wasn't intentional there. They've said they've come out and said it just wasn't included. But that should have been quality checked first. That was really important. And I think that's pissed a lot of people off. So that's where we're kind of seeing this big divide coming in right now where people are like, well, actually, we wanted to see something which was cool here. This is, you know annoying but what we should say is that they've been communicating with the community a massive amount whether it's on twitter whether it's on reddit whether it's on the forums the forums they're literally non-stop coordinating with people responding to tickets even responding to people who are quite frankly just being downright rude to the company they're still putting responses on there trying to answer the questions which i wouldn't have the time of day for so fair play to them for that and so we do have to give them props for that and i think obviously going forward if they continue to interact with the community they continue to stabilize the game and get it to a really solid point in a month or so's time, we could be having ourselves a really, really good game. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, well, that's not good enough for right now. And yet, it is annoying. I get it. But 
At the same time, we're working towards a common goal. They're working alongside us and they are listening to our feedback. So I think that's a really, really positive thing that we do have to remember. A lot of MMOs and a lot of game companies in general don't care. So the fact that they are caring, the fact that they're taking, you know, our opinion as players into account and listening to community feedback, features we'd like added in, such as faster running on the roads, which we see now, it's much, much better. And I do appreciate that. So I don't think it's at all a flop. And I think we're only going to get better and better stuff going forward. More stability, more content and more exciting features. So I would say stay tuned. Now, obviously, as well, you know, there's a few other things coming around the block that we've seen from data mining and stuff, which I'm not going to go over today. But even some other stuff, which I'm sure we haven't seen anything of yet, which is in the upcoming works, I'm excited to see. So for me personally, I'm really excited. I'm really enjoying the game, which is the main thing. And above all else, I'm having fun. I've made a great community of friends over on the server that I'm on as well. And that is by far the main thing in an MMO for me. So personally, I think it's a huge W of a game. Those that disagree, that's absolutely fine. But just try and think about it logically. Overall, my opinion very, very good. The next thing we're going to talk about here then is the changes to the marketplace and actually what the best armor is. And for this one, I'm actually going to bring up a Reddit post for you guys because I've seen a really cool post on Reddit here, which kind of details what each of the stat distributions are for the types of armor so that you can find them a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that one up on screen for you guys now. So if we look into this one here, the post is by Reality. You can see the user up here at the top. And this is with the trading post changes. I thought this could be of some use. This is really, really good in my opinion. This is very useful. And um, so what they've gone and done here is basically put a post on that says what the armor suffix is. So what the name of the armor is. So armor of the soldier, barbarian, fighter, monk, etc. They've gone down all of these lists. They've listed the primary stat and a secondary stat if there is one. And then obviously the ones that aren't are just solely strength, dexterity, int, etc. And this is really, really useful. So I'm going to go just kind of scroll down this as I'm speaking to you guys now. And I will leave this post linked in the description below because obviously it's going to make it a lot easier for some of you guys to you know go ahead and find the armor that you actually want with the stats that you actually want on it and of course please do go and show some love to this post do go and give it an upvote an award whatever you want to do whatever however reddit works i'm still not 100 percent sure with it uh, but yeah go over there show them some support leave a nice comment or whatever and as you can see 97 percent upvoted so this is a pretty popular post and uh with good reason because that is very very useful and um, so again i'll leave that link down below for you guys so you can go and check it out if you do want to but this is really really cool Another question that I've been seeing very, very regularly on Reddit and in the Discord is what is going on with the economy? Is it better now that we've seen, obviously, the mergers of all of the trading posts? So to quickly kind of expand on that point for those of you that haven't played much since the update... All of the trading posts in Eternum are now linked. And the way that this works is you pay the tax from the territory which you set it up in. So evidently everyone is going to the lowest prices, which has meant that all the trading costs have basically gone down to minimum because otherwise nobody's making any money. And you go to the one which is the lowest cost and you pay the trading price they have in their settlement to put it up. And then it's the same wherever you buy it from. You pay their trading tax when you buy it as well and the trading tax goes to them. So it kind of works out that every settlement does get something. You can buy it from wherever... And I do think that this gives some of the outer trading posts, the further out places which are less used, a little bit more viability for some income. Because when you're out there, if you do head up to say, let's say Morningdale, because you're doing a skinning run or you're doing a harvesting run. It's quite a lot of good stuff up there in terms of those materials. So you might be heading up. You might think, oh, I really could do with this X amount of food. Go on there, buy it from there, and then you'll get a little bit more income than you might have done before. So overall, I do like that. But there is the question of, of course, what is the point in having it franchised initially then when each individual place and, you know, kind of working out where the best place to sell was, what you could sell in each area to make more money. But I think overall on my server, at least, I don't know, most of the servers I've seen posted on Reddit, which as we all know, if it's posted on Reddit and it's a positive thing, it must be pretty good because a lot of people on reddit are quite angry so uh basically it seems like it's fixed a lot of economies or it's at least normalized a lot of economies now what i mean by that is that we've seen you know structured pricing where stuff has gone up from 0 0.001 for anything which is ridiculous and then we've seen some stabilized prices not about 0 0.005 which is still not great but it's it's a little bit more than the one there and then we've seen a little bit a few of the other stuff so like iron on my server has gone from around the 0 0.5 to 1.2 in some places averaged out about 0 0.8 across the board same with like silver ore and that's kind of works out more sensibly i would say it makes people be able to actually buy things and you can reliably check the prices and of course compare the prices across the entire thing which i think is a good thing it makes it simpler at the very least for any new players coming into the game and means you can access anything wherever you would need it which i do think is nice a qol type feature but what this will do going forward begs to see a question i wonder personally with future content you know whether we're going to see 
those future areas when they are released are they going to be linked to the same trading system or are we going to see some core world and then outer world differentiations there so maybe it's slightly different rules it's uh, maybe it's a pvp only area maybe it's a pve only area or maybe it's exactly the same as here but it doesn't connect because the eternal bubble only covers those like set areas that we've got right now maybe it'll be something where the outposts fragment off from the rest of the map the claimable map and they join up with some of the new areas we get who knows but that is something that i'm wondering so we'll see as we go forward with updates obviously how that does actually work there so something else that I've seen quite a lot of comments about right now, of course, is the end game content in New World and kind of the grind that we've currently got. Now, for me, I have to agree with this update. They've changed these elite zones to make them harder. And um, they've repositioned a lot of stuff on the map to mean that you can't do certain jumps, which I honestly thought was quite cool that you could skip stuff if you knew how to skill jump it, if you knew where to jump up and stuff. They've patched that so they don't want people doing it, which is, you know, fair enough if that's how it's going to be. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff where they've, they've kind of patched it a lot. And um, also, obviously, as I said there, they've increased the difficulty of all the mobs on purpose to make these zones harder. So... Some of them have been bugged where they've got enormous HP pools and whatever. They're going to be fixed, hopefully, this upcoming week's update. But currently, obviously, we're seeing some of the mobs in general just be a lot more difficult to kill. A lot more difficult to farm in smaller groups. And even some of these more coordinated 10 to 20 man groups that are going in are still getting wiped. Particularly a Merc Guard by those big sword swinging guys. Fiery sword guys, you all know what I mean. Those guys seem to be a real pain in the backside. So, getting those buffed. Was a big stinger. But that being said, is it more rewarding? Well, currently, no. So what they did in the update was accidentally nerfed the elite chest loot, which obviously is completely the wrong decision. And of course, they did say it was accidental. So we're not kind of going to dwell on that too much. Hopefully, again, this is fixed in the upcoming update. They did say it'd be fixed ASAP. But what I think they should have done is actually the opposite. They should have buffed the loot. So they've made the zones harder. Let's make the elite chest, which you can only get once every 24 hours. And that's if you're successfully completing it, of course, and getting to those chests without dying. Let's make the little rarity increase, where you rarely ever get any of those greys or greens out of the chest. And let's make it blues tend to be the most common drop. Then you're getting quite a few purples and a nice amount of legendaries dropping as well. As well as some of those good recipes, you know, a lot more potions coming out of that. A lot more ingredients coming out of that. That tier 5 stuff would be a lot, lot better. Because right now, they're more difficult and basically less rewarding until we get fixed. And of course, even when they do get fixed, as it were, they're only going to be as rewarding as they were before. But for a more difficult challenge, which in my opinion isn't the play it just makes endgame very very grindy for not a lot of reason and before it was actually quite fun it was quite fun that you could go in and solo some and skill jump around and i think that that was an element to the game which wasn't necessarily intended but gave people a little bit of an option when they didn't have all their clan mates or the guild mates whatever and of course any friends on where they could just go around and do some stuff grab some crafting reagents and of course that is meant to be scarce end game stuff but with all the updates we've had prior where we got them increased and decreased and then swatched around and all that kind of good stuff i feel like it shouldn't be something which is now a chore and i feel like that is what we're seeing we're seeing end game become a lot more of a grind which if that was there from the offset i don't think people would be as upset about but because it was easier and now it's getting harder it doesn't really make sense and on top of that, it's getting harder without a gear score increase or without a level increase, which again is kind of fair enough. But what I don't want to see is the end game become a grind. And right now, that is what it feels like. What it was before was, you know, it was a little bit of a grind, but people were able to get through it nice and easy. Now it's a big slog to try and get through these areas. And to be honest, it's not something I'm too keen on. And I think a lot of the community are kind of fed up because we want to see more content. We want to see these zones expanded, not made harder. That's not a challenging content. It's exactly doable, just the same as it was. It just takes a lot more time and effort to do exactly the same stuff, as I say, currently for less rewards. Now, bear in mind, that is going to be getting fixed so it'll be currently doing more effort for the same rewards afterwards but of course what you've got to remember now is that pvp flagging increases your loot look so obviously when you are in those areas and your pvp flags then you should be getting some decent stuff especially if you've got luck on your gear as well overall you are getting more because it's a 10 percent increase that is really really good but it does feel a little bit like we've traded a small amount of extra luck for a lot harder enemies so obviously they'll monitor this as we go forward but let's just see how it plays out hopefully it feeds into you know, content that's upcoming in the game, whether it's going to be new zones, new expeditions, or we're going to see some new weapons or armors, or indeed even levels and gear score potentially raised, then that might feed into it quite nicely, and maybe it's a preliminary thing for that, which of course they haven't leaked or said anything about yet, so we'll have to wait and see, and then in which case, fair enough, I'll, I'll let that slide, because obviously we'd love to see more content, but right now it's feeling a little bit in the balance of, it could go one way, it could go the other, it's kind of 
very much hanging in the balance. So we'll see how they deal with this going forward. But the main thing is to keep the game fun. So let's get those elite chests fixed ASAP and those ridiculously OP mobs right now fixed ASAP as well. And another thing that I just wanted to cover here, kind of to round up this video here then, is that a lot of people have been saying, you know, a few negative things about the current update. I think what people have got to really take into account is that this doesn't mean the game is negative overall. It's just they're not happy with the recent changes. That's completely different to, you know, not enjoying the game, not liking the game overall, and not wanting to play it, you know. Certain things from the update have not impressed me. So, you know, obviously the reduce of elite chest loot, really not that great. You know, lagging in wars, which we didn't get before, really not that great. But again, they've addressed these issues. They are taking care of them. And to be honest, I'm really enjoying Outpost Rush right now. I'm really enjoying the other PvE content that we've got. I'm really enjoying the crafting systems and kind of leveling up my life skills. And I'm really enjoying playing the game with my community that I've built. And that is kind of what this game is all about. So overall, I think it's a really, really good game. And so obviously, there's a lot of negativity going around about the latest update. Personally, I actually think it was a pretty good update. I know a lot of you aren't going to agree with me on that. But, you know, once the stuff has been been ironed out all of these bugs and issues that came with it I actually think it was very good and if we can bring the fire staff ice gauntlet back in line with where they should be then we're actually looking at quite good changes across the board and a lot more of a better quality of life update to the game so and it can only improve going forward we would hope and um, so for me I do think it's a very very good thing but just be wary there's a lot of negativity going around but just ignore most of it because people are quite kind of annoyed with the updates not the game as a whole so other than that guys that is going to be it for today's video this is some of the most asked questions questions slash most talked about topics that I have seen for New World 1.1 or New World Into the Void. If you guys have enjoyed this video, you'd maybe like to see another part where I cover some more questions or indeed you've got questions you want to ask for a second part of this, then drop me a comment down below and leave a like on today's video so I know that you guys want more of this sort of content. If you would like to get involved in the discussion on my Discord server, the link for that will be in the description as well so you can be involved behind the scenes talking about these videos, talking about questions and things for the upcoming releases that I have here on the channel then do join below there if you are new here to the channel and you would like to see more new world content then make sure you are dropping a subscribe down below as i do upload every single day like i said at the start of today's video and i would love to have you here as part of my channel community so do make sure you're joining up there other than that guys as always thank you very much for watching appreciate your time take care and peace